Hey guys, I'm No Sleeves 12 and today's video is going to be about hitting tips against the CPU for beginners. So if you've been watching my streams lately, I've been just grinding MLB The Show 20 since it came out and I'm also kind of a novice when it comes to Diamond Dynasty as this is my first year of playing online against other players and whatnot as normally I just stick to Road to the Show the past like 10 years. So, uh, but I do have some tips for you guys that have now, you know, just trial and error and talking to like pros at this game uh, in regards to helping you guys out and make... Uh, uh, the beginning of your game a little bit easier transition as you get into Diamond Dynasty. So today specifically, we're going to talk about hitting against the CPU. Now this goes for veteran, all-star, Hall of Fame, legend, all that kind of stuff. Obviously it gets harder as you scale up, but when it comes to Showdown, Conquest, uh, March to October, these are all going to apply to that and they work really well. So let's get into the tips on how to hit the CPU in MLB The Show 20 for beginners. So guys, basically the strategy is the two strike strategy and what you're going to do against any of the CPUs, uh, this is going to uh, apply a ton to uh, showdown and the bosses that you have to face, but the two strike strategy is pretty simple. All you do is you take every single pitch until you're on two strikes, even if it's dead down the middle. Uh, the reason for this, and I, I find that this works especially for beginners, is because I feel like you struggle a lot early on in this game with timing. Um, you're going to find, you know, you reach for those breaking pitches, you're way out in front, and sometimes you're even out in front on the fastball. And by watching these come in so much, because basically you're guaranteed to get at least, you see at least three pitches in at bat when you're not, uh, when you're just taking, um, you're going to see how they break, how fast they come in and whatnot. And you're going to notice that your timing gets way better just by watching them come in regardless. But what it will do is it's going to wear down the energy of the, of the pitcher that you're coming in. So this, this was an all-star, this is a March to October. And basically, I was really struggling with the Padres throughout the year. I destroyed with the Rangers, um, but I was grinding for Tatis's uh, affinity card. And, um, yeah, I was just having a heck of a time. I could not hit home runs with the Padres. And I decided to, okay, I'm just going to start taking, get the energy down. Because when the energy is low uh, and the confidence starts to wear down a little bit, that is when he starts hanging breaking balls. And online, I find that, you know, the breaking balls are usually outside the zone. And those are the chase pitches online you really really want to lay off because those are the pitches that you can absolutely mash I find that they really locate their fastballs and whatnot and when it comes to offline whereas it's the kind of the opposite uh, on online so far uh, but again the hanging stuff is what you're looking for so again you're gonna have times where you where you you know you strike out or you just absolutely watch a fastball just a meatball right down the middle of the pipe Forget about that because, like I said, it's not just about wearing the pitcher down. It's also about being able to see and react to how long it takes and the movement of these pitches that are coming in. So this guy specifically, I'm in. This is Woodruff. I'm, I believe this is the uh, division or the wild card. Sorry. So I have to win this game. And uh, uh, all I start doing is just taking until two strikes. And also what you'll notice is when you're playing against a CPU, a lot of the time that when you're 0-2 or you have two strikes against, they really come close to the zone, which makes it super simple because, you know, if they go way out of it and you're bad at chasing, that's when things get tough. But you'll see here, I just wait for, you know, take the two strikes, wait for him to, you know, leave something out over the plate, and I absolutely demolish one with Machado. And I was not able to do this throughout the regular season because I wasn't doing the strategy. I was, you know, chasing. Um, I was trying to hit, you know, trying to rush. And that's another thing that I really want to get across. The two-strike strategy will make it so you don't rush. I find that a lot of new players want to hit that home run immediately no matter where it is in the zone. And whether it's a strike or a ball, even if it is a strike, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to hit a home run with it. You need to be able to actually tee it up. If it's on the edge and it's a sinker on, you know, on the bottom of the plate, you're not going to hit that even if you tee it up. Even if your your PCI is on it and your and your timing, well, very rarely you're gonna be able to hit a home run with that. So, again, it's about waiting for the pitches that are very good. You want to wait for the breaking ball that's kind of in the mid to lower part. I would say uh, not very low, but just in that below the mid. That's what you want to wait for that breaking pitch over there. And the CPU on two strikes seemingly does it more often than not. His 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 third strikeout pitch will be in the zone. Not to mention, 
um, what you can do if you're still struggling with chasing is that when you get to two strikes, you can if you're in March to October or you have a really good team or you've got you know one of your better bats in showdown mode, what you can do is your PCI is almost big enough where you can just leave it in the middle of the plate and as long as you wait until it's you know it's going to be a strike or very very close you can basically foul it off unless it's way out of the zone um that's when you want to start laying off but again because you're seeing more pitches you're going to lay off way more often than not and it's going to make you a better hitter overall it has made me one and i'm I'm positive it's going to make you one as well so the next thing I want to discuss is showdown mode. So when you're playing, uh, I'll use the AO West as an example. When you're playing Verlander, uh, you basically got to get 16 runs before you get 20 outs. Now, obviously, it depends on how far into the thing you actually go. You can almost get to, I believe, 15 runs um, just by doing all of the challenges. But let's say you get to about 10, and you've got to get 6 runs before 20 outs. Now, it seems real simple, but I have... The, the problem with showdown mode is it's actually very difficult. Um, I find that no matter how well you hit the ball, it ends up either being a pop-out or it's a ground ball into a double play. Almost every time, unless you perfect, perfect it, and uh, or you get walked. And again, this video is for beginners. It's not for you know great players of the game, and it's just for players like myself who's just learning the ins and outs of MLB The Show for Diamond Dynasty. So when you're playing those ones, the the uh, mini-bosses, again, in the AL West would be Liam Hendricks and Shohei Otani, what I've noticed is the two strike method works um, the most. It is the most effective against those specific scenarios, and the reason is is because they won't change out. So once you whittle down their energy and confidence very very far, then you kind of have them where you want it. Because if once their energy is really low, their pitches that are outside the zone will be way outside the zone, easy to lay off, and when they're in the zone, they either hang or you know they're very easy to locate. So keep that in mind. I know that I spoke to a couple of people about DeGrom uh, specifically is that he's so difficult that you basically have to do the two-strike method because, again, as you whittle down 20 outs, as long as you're seeing three pitches each at bat, um, you know, you're obviously going to see more. You'll get some hits, and his confidence will wear down. And, um, again, just don't swing until you're on two strikes. It seems weird. I know that you're going to give up some great pitches uh, to start in that bat. But, again, once in, until you learn to either lay off or you can notice and pick up a fastball or breaking ball almost immediately this is the best way that i've i've come to to learn the game and again this isn't so much as like it's not like a cheese or a glitch or anything the reason why i think that it's so effective is because it makes you actually watch pitches instead of trying to rush it and get that instant home run um by taking so many like i said the most effective thing from the strategy is just seeing how the balls the ball breaks and how fast it comes in so uh, i hope that does help guys again if you've uh, enjoyed the video please give it a like and subscribe if you like the content um i I will be doing MLB and NHL content daily. So again, please subscribe if you like that. And I will see you guys next time.